If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know this is not an engine that needs any introduction at this point, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is a VK45DE engine from an Infinity. Uh, this one's actually from a JDM engine. Um, it's mostly, by the layout of the engine, is mostly re closely related to the 2003 and 4 Infinity M45 of the US, 2002 to 2006 Infinity Q45 with the FX. 45s and I think it's uh, somewhere in the middle they changed and um, I'm gonna discuss the the differences similarities uh, my focus will be on the Infinity M45 part of it but um, if you've got an FX45 that for whatever reason needs this kind of work uh, hopefully you can draw some parallels here so I'll talk about say Let's go with the similarities first. And first, it's tripping me. I need to straighten it out. Looks crooked. There you go. That's better. So, similarities. You have the same crankshaft pulley. It's actually the same crankshaft. So, that engine that's been taken apart over there, that's from a 2006 M45 US. This one right here, as I said, let's just call it a 2003 M45 just for the sake of argument so one you do keep the same crankshaft pulley crankshaft same block all aluminum aluminum block aluminum heads down there uh, titanium valves it's it's a really nice engine for what it is um, you keep well the AC compressors in the same spot the slight differences uh, the 2003 versus the 2006, they used different part numbers. That's really smooth, by the way, for used engine. They both use the same uh, power steering pump, so this one's the same, interchangeable. The alternator is the same, interchangeable as well. Right here, the pulley, uh, the water pump. So it's mostly similar uh, with a slight difference. In the 2003 M45, they use a hydraulically operated um, clutch. So here, I've got a better pump to show. So this is, this is exactly what you're looking at here. Um, and as you can see, the lines come here through this reservoir over here. That's your other when you're checking for power steering fluid in your uh, earlier M45, check that as well. Um, so here, and you've got a solenoid here. You see the solenoid, this electric solenoid over here, right? That is what actuated. So your, your water pump was pumping both uh, hydraulic fluid and coolant. The mounting surface of the of the cool uh, of the water pump itself is similar. That's what it looks like. So they share the same um, gaskets and part numbers. Uh, so those are some of the differences. You know, that's where the differences start. So I'll uh, I'll put my focus on the cooling system. Um, as I said, right here, all similar. Um, when it comes to all this other piping, the radiator, radiator cap, um, the the backside. Oh, shoot, how do I show the back and the front? Can we see the back side from here? Uh, not much, but just take it from me. It's the same uh, for the most part. This one's a JDM, so it looks a little weird over here. Um, otherwise, bo uh, both throttle bodies uh, get coolant in them. Uh, this one right here, the throttle body that goes there is this one here. And uh, coolant actually doesn't go into the throttle body itself. It goes into the spacer, the spacer right here, right? And in the newer one, in the 06, this is your throttle body, and coolant get, gets in here and out through this one here. Okay, that's the cooling system. Let's go to what? Fuel. Um, the, I don't have the fuel rails, but injectors and all that, all the same, same part numbers. Uh, nothing changes there. The coil packs are the same. Spark plugs are the same. That's why I've actually been saving my coil packs over there. So I've got like a set of three. Uh, and I'm going to declare it publicly. If you need something, coil packs or something like that, give me a shout and I'll, I'll hook it up. Um, 
claw packs, spark plugs, all those are similar. Um, then starting ignition fuel system. Let's talk about. Uh, I'll come back to the air system later because that's a, that's a major one. Um, and oh, by the way, this is what I was trying to show earlier. The the injectors are right here. They you know they are affixed to the to the intake. This is the lower uh, intake low intake collector and this right here is the fuel injector or this one whichever one's clearer or this one yeah there you go <laughs> they all go into that so that's a port injected port fuel injector you know rather than direct injection where the nozzles are within the cylinder within the cylinders so one difference right here, this one's going to be a little misleading because as I said, this one's a JDM engine. I don't know exactly where it came from. So it's uh, starters on the uh, on the left side, on the driver's side. Uh, but that is how the 2006 is set up. The 2003 has the uh, starter on the opposite side. The 2003 M45 has a starter on the opposite side. And that's one big difference. That's the reason I don't, well, that's the reason you can't just buy a... Uh, an engine from 2003 2004 and just you know stick it in your car and hopefully and hope it works um but otherwise you know as i said the block itself is the same i don't know why they changed it um the so we're done with the starting system yes let's jump off the starting system let's go to lubrication system i do have another video uh discussing the spark plug tube and dipstick in a little detail but since we have this video going on I'm gonna pull this out and show discuss the difference briefly alright so check this out this is your older this is how you know you get the older one when your um, oil filter is a little sunken in there um, that is a 2003 style this one here is flush with a mounting surface this is a really tiny oil filter but I assume it's a little about this long, but it's going to mount flush with that. The other thing you'll notice is, well, you can't really tell from looking at it, but this one's kind of shallow. But then your, your, um, your drain plug is right here. Okay, your drain plug to this um, older oil pan is right here, facing this way, right? Facing this way. Uh, however, on this one here, your drain plug is all the way on this side. They're facing the same direction, but the location is what's different. And then you'll notice the profile right there. Well, uh, you'll notice that the profile of these oil pans. I'll try to I'll try to do better. Uh, maybe a different video once I've removed the oil pan. But look at that shape, right? It's flat over here, flat at the bottom then it wedges going backwards this one right here it is not flat um as you can see right here it's not a flat setup it's got a little bit of a of an addition here and uh this one actually holds a little more capacity well that's not entirely correct the manual for an 06 and up m45 called for an eighth of a quart less oil than the 03 or 04 manual did. That is despite the oil pan seeming deeper and a little larger and the dipstick been, being even a little longer. So that is something to watch out for. Keep that at the back of your mind. Uh, and this is this becomes pertinent because uh, the few, the numerous times I've actually heard of people looking for oil pans to replace, they usually 06 and up oil pans. I have also tried to use an 03 or 04 oil pan in an 06 engine. And so that is something I hope to discuss in further detail in, in a video specifically about the oil pans. I'll get back to the oil pans, be a little more detailed in it. But they use the same oil filter. They use the same, um, so the same oil filter, the same uh, oil, <laughs> same valve cover, valve covers, same valve cover gaskets. Uh, you know, th that's all similar. I don't have the other one to show, but. That's the same, you know, most of that stuff is the same. So the cooling system, or rather the lubrication system, is similar in these in these engines. Um, then comes to what, I'll just talk about the power steering since I'm here. Uh, as I said, the power steering pump is the same. Uh, the reservoir is slightly different, but 
at the end of the day it's mounted in the same location uh you guys have seen my other videos the uh as i said the timing cover is the same that's that's the other one there's the the other timing cover and it's you know pretty much it is the same thing just and the dipstick tube is the same as well it's just that the dipstick is a little longer in the newer engines that one right there as a result of the oil pan being a little deeper or the profile being different um but then you know i mean it's a minor thing but this one when inserted this um uh, dipstick faces it's longitudinal with the engine the other one is the newer style is going to be uh, perpendicular to the engine tra transverse you know transverse mounting um cooling system radiator all that's the same uh which brings us to some of the bigger stuff the intake the intake of this car the intake system as you can see big difference well this is the starter by the way hanging out there oh by the way since we're talking about the starter since uh on these guys the starter is on uh, the left side you usually have this wire going underneath the oil pan and uh it's a you know it's a plastic uh bracket that holds keeps the wire uh, intact all right what else I'll show a side view. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll show the back. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's just normal stuff. Uh, you flex plate and ring gear, all the same. Um, let's talk about the in the intake. First, this JDM engine has an interesting looking intake right here. It's got so much... Um, what do you call these? Baffles or something? But I wanted to hold on to it for a little while because that's a lot of... A lot of tubes, you know, help with the re resonance or whatever it is. It's so uh, that's a lot. It's a lot going on with it. Oh, that rubber is really supple too. Nice. If I could use it, I would. Um. So brings us to the intake. Been trying to avoid it for a while. Let's go here. Let's just talk about it this way. Oh no! Before we get to all that, 2003. You'll notice that the canister is in the back this canister right here is in the back there you go uh, with the 2003 you have um, this canister you know the uh, evap canister mounted in the back um, Oh, by the way, the knock sensors and all that. This is the same back here. Nothing's different over here. Uh, so this is mounted in the back, right? And this one right here is a 2006, and this one's usually in the front. And you'll notice that the throttle body in this one is mounted in the front, while the throttle body of the 2003 is side-mounted. All right, this is them right here. That one, 06, 03. That's definitely taller. Both the lower collector and the upper collector are... They are both taller than this one right here. The lower collector and the upper collector. This one's more of a rectangle that's well it's a I won't say square but this uh, landscape mode portrait mode there you go <laughs> um, let's talk about the throttle bodies well first the layout okay so it's good it's good it's good it's good there you go the layout looking at the top that's what you got you got your side entry throttle body you got your front entry th throttle body uh, the um, vacuum canister in the front vacuum canister in the back because on this one the evap canister is actually sitting here on the other one it sits in the front so this guy right here it's manually operated however you also have an electric operation to it this is it this one's all electric all electric throttle body and since I'm going to use it, reuse it, I put a cap on it. A cap is equal to Ziploc bag and zip tie. Smart, ain't it? And then you've got your one, you know, combination setup. This one right here, one plug does it all. It's your throttle position sensor as well as your throttle actuator. I don't have the the exhaust manifolds with me but that's one thing that's usually interesting because uh, back in the day 
in the 2003 M45 and I'd assume the Q45 as well, those usually had problems where you'd see those manifolds cracking. I don't know what they corrected, but in 2000 and if you try to buy a 2003 manifold, I believe it's still more expensive, the left one's still more expensive than the right one. Both of them do crack though. So in my other car, I actually made it work. I was able to install uh, um, the manifold from a 2006 and I made it work. The only difference was in the flange in between the two catalytic converters. Uh, just had to make modifications down the line and that's noted in some of my videos. Uh, so the only difference is you gotta watch just watch out for the pattern. This is the pattern for the 2006 and up. It's up, down, down, up. Up, down, down, up. Right? Right here. So, just do the same. Move your studs around. Change, you know, up, down, down, up. Up, down, down, up. The motor mounts are different. And, um... The 06 M45 uh, motor mounts are a little larger. Uh, this one right here is pretty, excuse me, this one right here is pretty much the standard size of an O3. However, there's a difference. This one has some form of a fluid filled, um, seems to be a fluid filled cavity. Uh, reminds me of a 2003 Maxima with a front. Sometimes those died and kind of killed your thing. But basically, um, you know, whenever the car would sense that you're about to what did it do? It stiffened it up, right? It gives it fluid, which makes it turgid, makes it rigid, right? And then it stiffens up your car. But then that's during uh, takeoff and whatnot. When you punch the throttle, it senses that, stiffens that up. When you release, when you're just driving, the fluid, you know, basically... It ch I, would, I don't know. I've never really torn into one of them, but I don't know how this compares to one of those... Uh, magnetic ride uh, suspensions. Uh, basically, this one uh, will relax when you're driving so that you're not getting the vibrations from the engine, right? So, with that, hopefully, gives you somewhat of an insight as to how a 2006 versus a 2003 Infiniti M45 varies. Um, for the most part, you'll be able to use the same harnesses in almost everything. And... Um, I said for the most part because I said every, almost everything here is similar, right? Everything is kind of the same, uh, all the way to the crankshaft sensor. Remember, crankshaft sensor. This one, uh, sorry, all the way to the camshaft sensor. This is a camshaft sensor. This one is just your variable intake sensor. If you got two of them on an M45 engine, they're not the camshaft sensor. Although it makes sense that it's at the cam, right? Uh, that serves a different purpose. And I'll show you what. This is it. This is what that, the purpose of that serves right there. So this is your, um, this goes to your intake, this oil right here, right? It, so this senses your camshaft, and your camshaft is down there. And again, that's the same in both of them, right? So this, you see this camshaft right here? It's got a thing on it. It's got a, right here. This is what your variable intake does. Um, it's got a little bit of play. It should. Well, if we can get it steady. All right, so here it is. Managed to get it steady. Um, when the solenoid kicks oil into this thing, it takes it out, out of phase. So check this out, right? See that these are aligned right now? All right, so oil shoots in here. And that makes it go out of phase like that. I can't remember if this is the right one or the left one. This is the left one. Good. So this is the right one to demonstrate on this side. So when um, when it does that, what it does is it delays um, the opening and closing of the of the valves. Uh, in this case, the intake valves. And when you've got you know your VVEL valve, um, VEL. Let me see. Variable valve event and lift, right? Variable valve, event and lift. So this delays it a little bit and your valve intake valves remain open a little longer, uh, gets you the, uh, whatever, the oil you need. And um, I think in the M45 that kicks in at around, uh, well, a combination of things that make you, you know, your VTEC equivalent, that magic happens at around 4,000 RPM 
3400 to 4000 uh it just depends on what gear you're in as well it's a pretty smart system so you know your this will change you can't you can barely feel this but you can hear the air change you know and as i said you'll see the dual runner thing happening you'll kind of feel the car change so just try to take it to 4000 rpm see what happens Before I forget, here's another thing that's different about the 2006 Infinity M45 and the 2003. This right here, this wire coming off the um, ECU harness, so this goes into the ECU. That's different, by the way. It's shaped a little differently, so up until here, they're pretty much the same, right? Up until this point of it. Uh, the way it goes into, this one goes in through the middle of the cowl, if I remember right, and uh, it's a different style uh, ECU, so that looks different. Um, just watch out for that. However, here, this is different as well. This goes into the transmission, and the 2003 transmission has three plugs on it, and that's why you have that. You know, green, green, black. Those go in there. I don't have my wire for the 2006 out here to compare, but it's just one big plug. You know, so just one plug over here instead of three. Those are, again, some of the differences, you know. Said I'm just mentioning things as I remember them as, as they come to me. And uh, back here, everything's pretty much the same. What you see here, you know, apart from that, obviously, that you have canister, but this leading to the coolant, the coolant tubes, at least the way to come out of here. Uh, it's different here because this is that JDM engine again, but otherwise, the layout is usually the same. And here, these are the various um, engine covers I've got. This one is the one that came with the JDM engine. Uh, when I say JDM, I actually need to give a caveat to that. So this came off a of Nissan, but you need to be careful. It needs to say just V8 because that's how I got lucky. Um, they thought it was a VK um, 45 DD engine, um, which is the direct injection one. There's a Neo DI or Neo D, Neo Di, I don't know how you pronounce that, but I believe that's like a hybrid direct injection. I'm not sure. I'm going to look into that, but those are some of the offerings in, in the United States. All we got was a direct injected engine. Sorry. It was the fuel injected engine port injection, right? And port injection just means that we again, like right here, right? Your air, your fuel injectors are right here. And they go into one of the ports of the intake manifold. So that's all we got in the States. And uh, I think it was a lucky purchase because they thought they had the wrong engine. And I told them, hey, could I get closer pictures of that engine? And when I got pictures, I was like, yeah, that actually looks good. Send me more. And uh, so that's, that's where it comes from, okay? With this, I hope, um, you know, if I've forgotten something, if I've blatantly lied about something, call me out, let me know. If I've forgotten something, it was not intentional, I promise. Uh, however, I, you know, I hope these ramblings kind of give some clarity to... Uh, to these engines, the VK45DE engine. This is going to be a long video. I don't think I'm even going to bother too much to separate it. Maybe just the intake part of it, because that was fun. <laughs> but um, other than that, just going to tell you, uh, just be careful if you do, if you happen to blow your engine for whatever reason, right? It's not, it doesn't happen to everybody. Uh, by the right Watching out, make sure you're watching out for the right stuff. That is, uh, the key thing is the starter. Make sure the starter is on the correct side for whatever you're trying to replace. Um, with that, good luck. Um, if you do have any questions about uh, about a, um, if you have any questions about these engines, uh, holla. Let me know. I'll try to help you the best way I can.